Good afternoon, Riverside Middle School families. I hope you're well. Uh, I am Rad Winawada, proud principal of Riverside Middle School. And I wanna thank you for taking the time this gloomy afternoon um, to be with us today and make certain that we have an open dialogue and all your questions um, have answers uh, or are actually made clear and communicated so I can provide you answers. Um, I begin by wishing you all well wishes and hope you're staying safe. Uh, hope your families are well, you're in good health and are not negatively impacted by this COVID-19 pandemic. We understand that these situations are anything but normal and want to make certain that we all are working as a team and as a community to provide the best possible uh, virtual learning experience for your child and the community as a whole. I begin by thanking the Board of Education. They have been tremendously supportive. Uh, Dr. Masalam, uh, our superintendent, uh, has been working tirelessly to make sure we have all the tools we need uh, to be successful in our virtual learning experience. To the Riverside Middle School staff, uh, including the custodians, the secretaries, um, the, the food service personnel, they've been working very hard to ensure uh, we have everything we need uh, to provide and support the Riverside Middle School community. Um, I begin by uh, reviewing the questions. I see there's many repetitive questions and I want to start off by um, really uh, reviewing the parent, student and teacher expectations. This is not an easy task and um, it's something that many hundreds of hours of thought were put into um, and we're not by any means saying it's perfect. Uh, as we know, nothing is perfect and it is going to require flexibility, uh, teamwork, um, in flexi flexibility, teamwork, and balance. I have to say balance because it's not a one size fits all and it never is. Our school community is a school community of 1,200 students. We are a fifth through eighth grade community averaging approximately 300 students per, per grade level. We do offer a plethora of advanced classes, a plethora of uh, year-long uh, classes, which will count towards high school credit. And we had to take into consideration and preserve the integrity of the schedule uh, that the former principal, Mr. Folletti, had in place, but at the same time conforms to the research that states uh, the, the screen time that is reasonable for students to be on. I wanna take a minute and very clearly uh, define what the difference is between synchronous and asynchronous learning. Synchronous learning is live instruction. Uh, live instruction is where students will be engaged with the teacher in a live Google Classroom. Asynchronous learning will be instruction that the teacher provides to the students to complete on their own accord, meaning at their own time, at their own pace. Uh, there's going to be a combination of both across the board, and it's going to be teacher specific. So it's going to be very important that we are all working as a team and communicating regularly with one another on multiple platforms. And that will be part of what I reviewed today uh, related to the parent, teacher, and student expectations. I will be sharing my screen and we'll go one by one. Um, I have probably 30 minutes of um, uh, just line item uh, content that I wanna discuss and very clearly define and speak to with regards to the parent expectations, the student expectations, and again, what the teacher expectations will be. Um, bear with me as I will be sharing my screen momentarily. Mr. Green, can you just let me know if where where we need to be? You're good. You're presenting right now. Everything good. Thank you. Um, so the Riverside Middle School again. Um, the staff, my assistant principal, Mr. Schneider, who's been uh, invaluable in this process and very helpful. And I want to extend a special thanks to him. And I also do want to extend a special thanks to Mr. Green 
and the technology team uh, of Riverside Middle School. They've done a remarkable job as well in bringing this to life. Um, as the um, is stated, we all have to have balance, flexibility, teamwork, and patience. And it is our mission uh, between the Crestwood Public School Board of Education, the superintendent, Dr. Yusuf Masalam, uh, the RMS staff and administration, we are here to help and support our families unconditionally with academics, mental, social, and emotional supports so we can ensure the success of every child that is enrolled at Riverside Middle School. We will need the parents' help. And we're not asking parents to be teacher uh, because I am a parent of four middle schoolers or three middle schoolers and one elementary student. It was very overwhelming in the spring uh, because of the, um, the timing, really. Everything was thrown on our laps and we had to respond uh, accordingly. We learned many lessons that we do not want to re uh, recur in, in the virtual learning that will be taking place throughout the first trimester. So we've asked parents and we are providing parents with as many resources we possibly can. I just wanna to speak to one of those resources that the district has worked very hard to put in place and get active ASAP. And they are creating a learning hub for parents of the entire Crestwood Public Schools district. This learning hub, and I do not want to share it, uh, put the horse or the cart before the horse, if I may, uh, as it will be introduced in the very short term. But what the learning hub will do, it will give parents all the access that they require to teachers across the district. Whether you have children in elementary, middle, or high school, you will be able to access all of their information and their teacher's information on the central learning hub for the Dearborn Heights Crestwood School District. What I really need to emphasize, and for this to be a successful venture for parents, for students, for teachers, it is critically important that parents contact the main office and update any changes to their primary phone numbers, email addresses, home address, and the like. Any pertinent information that we will require to communicate with parents should be updated with the main office. As a side note, I will be sharing all of these with a, le a letter uh, being sent and shared with the entire Riverside Middle School community at the conclusion uh, later this evening. Um, I will be sharing this document with you. Um, parents are expected to report absences. I need to emphasize Attendance will be taken at every period of the school day. Students will be held accountable for tardiness. They will be held accountable for absences. Parents, if you know that your child is going to be absent for whatever reason, doctor, dental appointments, and so forth, please call the attendance line like you would in a normal day, in a normal school day. Um, we do need help with parents establishing a safe space for students um, at home, a learning zone, if I may. Uh, but we want to get them into a, a routine and a schedule. That does mean going to sleep early. That does mean waking up early, brushing your teeth, taking a shower, getting into those healthy habits that we know are very important for children. They do need a fortified, healthy breakfast. Um, we definitely want to, again, make sure they're following and they're properly dressed and um, according to the dress code of the Riverside Middle School and Crestwood Public Schools dress code. Uh, and again, they need to be in the mindset of prepared and ready for active participation in classroom instruction. This is ultimately the goal is to make sure we're setting up our kids for success. The learning, the learning zone, uh, we're calling it the learning zone at home, should be free in absence of any distractions. That means other people, whether it's uh, siblings or animals or the TV being on, the students uh, should not have distractions um, in the home during their learning time. Um, and please, I know I use the word immediately and it is a very strong word, 
And I would simply say, do not delay if you need help with anything. We need you to communicate with the school. We are here to serve the public and make certain that every child is successful with the virtual learning experience. And we need to be communicated with uh, by the parents. Um, and parents are expected. We will be providing training for parents um, with, via technology training, whether it be um, just a meet and greet with the teachers. Uh, these will be up and coming. So virtual training, we hope all parents participate and are remain actively engaged in their child's education. Uh, we have to be a team. Again, I cannot um, emphasize how important it is um, that we take these online courses and the teaching and learning that is taking place uh, as important as we would if it were face-to-face -face instruction. I do want parents to take their time and ask their children how their day went, uh, what they are learning, um, are they having any trouble? In any of these problems, again, please communicate with the office so we can ensure the teachers are informed, we get the, the support they need in a structured manner. Um, Parent Connect is there to help guide the process. Parent Connect is access to your child's uh, performance and it will be very important for, again, the parents to uh, log in, make certain that they have uh, the proper access to Parent Connect. Uh, this will require updated emails um, and updated account information. This can be happened, we did send out, or there is a sheet on the district's website to update Parent Connect information for those parents who are not familiar with it. And all teachers are required to maintain a teacher website. That teacher website will have all pertinent information specific to that teacher's classroom expectations and what is going to be expected of students that are in that classroom at that period in that curriculum. That is what we have for the parent expectations. Now shifting along to the student expectations, and I hope many Riverside Middle School students are next to their parents during this meeting, or will view this meeting at a later time with their parents. Technology. Much of the technological issues we experienced in the spring were because students were using a multitude of, of browsers. They were using Internet Explorer, they were using Firefox, they were using many platforms that are not compatible to Google. As Superintendent Masalam and the, and the Crestwood Public Schools Board of Education indicated, we are exclusively Google and Google Suites. Everything will be compatible to Google to make it uh, easier for the students to follow and also for the parents. So please ensure that Google Chrome is the browser that is being used uh, while engaging in virtual instruction. Students are expected to turn and leave the camera on, uh, the mute the microphone, and avoid using the chat option unless directed to do so by the teacher. I know students are excited and I know they have many friends and, and relatives in the classroom, but when the teacher is instructing, the teacher uh, needs the students to be listening, engaged, and again, actively um, participating and following the teacher's instruction. So please, um, students, if you're listening, uh, refrain from the chat box. The guidelines uh, pertaining to technology use are intact, the same as they would be um, if you were in school. Uh, inappropriate use of the technology uh, will result in the technology being suspended and um, repossessed by the district or students uh, reverting back to hard copies to complete their instruction. We take it very serious. I know you miss that school bell as much as I do. So uh, that was a friendly reminder how uh, we all look forward to coming back to face-to-face -face instruction. Um, the virtual learning schedule will begin like a normal school day. 8.09 a.m. classes begin and students will be responsible 
uh, for attending their class through 253. Now, again, this is going to look different for every student, but every teacher will be communicating their schedule, um, whether they will be doing synchronous or asynchronous learning uh, throughout the day, every other day. It's all going to vary from teacher to teacher. So that's going to be clearly defined and communicated by the teacher and posted on their website. A friendly reminder, uh, the asynchronous is responsibilities and tasks students must complete when they are not live or virtual. Asynchronous uh, or, or synchronous will be when they are live and virtual with the teacher. There's going to be a balance. If a classroom is structured, there's going to be a balance. Um, students are expected. There will be six 45 minute period structured in the school day. Again, I want to emphasize these are live 100% live instruction. It's going to vary uh, between live instruction and instruction that students have to complete independently, whether that's pre recorded or recorded lessons, and the tasks that they have to, to complete can also be uh, something that they're completing on Google Classroom. Attendance will be taken for every period and tardies will be part of that attendance record and truancy measures will be taken to ensure that we are in compliance with state law. The structure that is currently being um, implemented for the virtual learning, all students will be assigned to a team. In eighth grade, we have two teams of teachers, team A, team B. In seventh grade, the same. Team A and Team B. In sixth grade, the same. 6A and 6B. In fifth grade, we have aligned teams as three four-person teams, 5A, 5B, 5C. The term team corresponds to the core area teachers, which are in ELA, math, science, and social studies. The students will furthermore um, be enrolled in rotations. The rotations are the special area or the extended area teachers, uh, classrooms such as art, music, um, gym, band, Spanish, Arabic, uh, PE, robotics, computers, uh, those types of classes, every student will be assigned a four week rotation with those special area teachers. Uh, those teachers will rotate every four weeks so we can expand um, students access to a plethora of different extendeds versus staying in one extended period over one trimester. Have no fear, students who are enrolled in year long band will continue to have year long band. Students who are enrolled in year-long Spanish for high school credit will continue to be enrolled in year-long Spanish. And students who are enrolled in both will be enrolled in two year-long classes. Um, so I want to put to rest any worries about students who are currently in advanced placement or year-long classes that will be counting towards high school credit. Students are expected to be responsible and review and participate and submit daily work. Now for the asynchronous learning, meaning that the asynchronous learning is learning tasks that the teacher assigns for students to complete at home on their own time and own accord, they will require, be required to submit um, an assignment with that asynchronous learning. That assignment will also count towards their attendance. So please make certain when students are completing independent practice, they submit the assignment in a timely manner and in accordance with the teacher's expectations. Again, students are expected uh, to, uh, to follow the established technology protocols with dress code, student code of conduct at all times, and we will be holding all members of our community to a very high standard when it comes to dress and, and behavior uh, and the way they carry about themselves um, during the instructional school days. 
Students and family members, again, the most important thing is the communication. And I wanna truly be certain that we are here to support you. We have uh, staff at the ready um, to help guide and support students uh, in every realm. We're about the whole child, whether it be academic, whether it be behavior, emotional, social, we wanna be there for you. And we know these are difficult times. And we wanna make sure we're supporting every single student enrolled at Riverside Middle School. And I just put a little quote in here. Uh, with this virtual learning, I know sometimes it's not the normal classroom and face-to-face -face is a lot different than, um, you know, virtual or being behind a computer screen. But believe me, everyone's watching, everyone's paying attention, and just be the best version of you. That's all we're asking. Be you, but give us the best version. Give us your undivided attention, and we promise we'll take you to the next level of learning at Riverside Middle School. Just want to review and make sure, uh, certain that teachers, our um, expectations are very clear as well. Teachers will be teaching five 45 minute periods of combined synchronous and asynchronous recorded instruction. The structure and format, I have to emphasize once again, will vary depending on the teacher's approach to instruction. From classroom to classroom, it will vary. Um, teachers are expected to deliver virtual instruction with a focus on essential standards. These are the academic standards, uh, but we also, and this is what's going to really take shape the first two weeks of school, we need to ensure that students have all the technology skills so they can be successful before we start focusing on the academics. We're, these first two weeks, we're really gonna be focusing on building relationships with teachers, being clear as far as the expectations go to virtual learning and making certain that all students have the technology skills associated with Google Suites to be effective as a virtual learner. We then will move the emphasis and focus on academics but most importantly, right now, it will be about relationships, technology skills, and making sure the students are in a good state of mind and prepared to uh, engage in constructive activities. There is something new that all students will be required to attend. This is the checkout tutorial. We know and we've heard your voices loud and clear, parents. Parents are not teachers and we don't expect them to be teachers and able to answer questions related to the classroom instruction received by the students. Many parents were frustrated because they were not part of that instruction and they could not help their child. This checkout tutorial period is intended to make certain that all students' questions are answered before they leave for the day. And also it's a built-in service, so students requiring or identified by the teachers during the school day that really didn't get it or had trouble with a concept or had trouble understanding or completing a task, that they get the support they need and they're referred to that tutorial period, the sixth period of the day. This is not, uh, this is not a same set group of kids. This is for any student that was identified by the teacher to struggle with the tier one classroom instruction during the day. Um, I do want to, again, remind everything, a variety of methods to deliver the instruction will be used and all teachers will be posting a syllabus and bi-weekly lesson plans so the parents are very clear on what's being learned in the classroom. Uh, teachers will have these posted and updated on the school web, on their individual teacher websites, uh, which will be accessed through the Crestwood Public Schools parent portal. The most important thing is the feedback. Uh, grade books will be updated at a minimum of every two weeks. Uh, this will again be teacher dependent and may happen daily, but we have stated that the grade book, uh, the student parent connect um, will be updated on a biweekly basis. Additional support, teachers will be referring students who identify again at the checkout tutorial period. Uh, 
they will be given the opportunity to receive additional supports before they leave for the school day. The teachers will be communicating often and we do have a communication tree uh, where Riverside Middle School staff will be collaborating with the classroom teachers to make sure they're following up with families, uh, students that have not been engaged in virtual learning, trying to figure out solutions as to why they haven't been engaged and the like. Um, again, teachers will be coordinating lesson plans with other teachers, so we are all doing uh, and staying on pace with the pacing guides established in the curriculum in uh, the trimester syllabus and updated weekly, bi-weekly lesson plans will be on the teacher website. With any concern or problem, we ask that all the parents do communicate first with the teacher. The teacher is the primary uh, point of contact and we would appreciate parents always bringing any concerns that they have to the teacher first. We know this is not a perfect setup or a perfect system. There will be questions and that's why we are having this forum today, so I can hopefully answer many of your questions. And um, I am going to stop there and shift, and thank you for those parents. Um, <clears throat> thank you to the parents who submitted their questions, and I want to definitely give you some answers today. Our first week of school will be all half days, Monday through Thursday, then we break I'm sorry. Um, then we will be breaking for the Labor Day weekend. Uh, Friday and Monday will be off and we will return to a full schedule on Tuesday. Um, the thing I wanna ask is, um, or answer, I'm sorry. Many parents have been asking about the Chromebook distribution. The Chromebook distribution, hopefully when the cycle is complete, uh, every student will have access to a Chromebook or be assigned a Chromebook that needs one. We are currently in process of inventorying 2,000 Chromebooks received by the district. It will be on a priority needs basis. We are currently, again, identifying students and families who are in a high need, and uh, we will be getting those Chromebooks assigned to students at the soonest possible time. Scheduling and schedules. We've been working very hard to bring uh, the schedules online and we are currently um, close, but I don't want to share them prematurely. At the latest, it will be Friday. At the earliest, it will be late evening tomorrow. Um, I don't want to promise, but I can say that we are, again, putting the fine tuning on the scheduling and we'll be having that sent to students and they can access their classes at that time and their teachers. IEP students for special education, um, special education providers will be contacting uh, students with special needs, making certain to introduce themselves and the mode of operation. Special ed students will be receiving um, special education services in accordance with their IEP uh, and IDEA guidelines. So um, the CAP students from the fourth grade entering fifth grade, absolutely, they are advanced classes. They have been identified and they have been scheduled for the advanced classes for ELA and mathematics in fifth grade. The physical materials, we are having a distribution of materials a tentative schedule I will not share because it will be weather dependent. So we want to be, um, hopefully we will share the schedule for distribution uh, for next week. Currently what we do know is Monday, our first day back, we are scheduling, and this is for students who were former eighth graders now in ninth grade. We do have um, their loxers that are required to be emptied. So we will be asking uh, the ninth grade students to pick up their contents the afternoon of the 31st. We will be sending out a schedule for students. Um, I'm sorry, a schedule for locker uh, distribution of contents uh, for students for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But I do not want to send them out prematurely and it will be weather dependent. So we want to try to make sure that that is in accordance 
uh, with um, the weather. Uh, one thing I would like to say is there will be a distribution of hard packets. A distribution of hard packets will be um, scheduled for next week as well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we will definitely get back to you with that schedule forthcoming. Another question that was posed, uh, the locker clean out, I think I just mentioned that we will have the same for current sixth, seventh and eighth graders. So they have the opportunity to come in uh, in a structured manner, social distancing three or four at a time and pick up the contents of their locker uh, and practice the, again, guidelines and safety precautions that we've all been accustomed to. Um, The parent portal for info for fifth graders, uh, you should be receiving and we will be sending out information. Thank you for that. I will ensure parent portal information um, is received by all members of the Riverside Middle School community. And you have the opportunity to update your passwords and retrieve your user information so you can gain access to the parent portal. Attendance will be taken as it is every single day using My Star Attendance, which is the official log for student attendance. If students do not show up to class, uh, they will be held accountable and they will be held accountable to the truancy laws of the state of Michigan. We are obligated to take attendance for every single period and it will happen via My Star. Um, Yes, yeah, so the training of teachers, teachers are receiving professional development uh, for the next two days. Teachers will also be engaged not only um, in professional development uh, provided by the district, but they will also be uh, provided professional development and work together as collaborative teams and in professional learning communities. Uh, and that is, again, uh, one thing we truly are promoting at the highest levels is, is making certain that our teachers are prepared um, for the virtual learning. So we appreciate that question. Uh, an additional question is how will students receive extra support if needed? I go back to the um, checkout tutorial period that's been incorporated into the schedule. Uh, this is again about um, making certain every child has access to support that needs it. Uh, if a child um, is not identified by a teacher and comes home and expresses they're having trouble uh, understanding, please reach out to the teacher. We will make accommodations. We will make sure that child is included um, where and when need be. This is, again, the um, conclusion of the facts. I know I probably generated more questions than... Um, I addressed and we have the opportunity and Mr. Green is going to help me out uh, with some of the questions that are being posted. Uh, if any, Mr. Green will um, read them out and I will gladly uh, answer them. So uh, please, um, Mr. Green, if, if you may, have we received any questions? Uh, I do need that shared with me so I can see the questions. I'll have to be added as a collaborator on that forum. I just sent it your way. Okay, give me one minute here. Thank you, Mr. Green, and thank you for all your support. Uh, and parents, thank you. And while Mr. Green is reviewing the questions, I truly want to emphasize the importance of working together as a team. Um, by no means is this going to be perfect. This is the first time it's ever been attempted. And we're giving it. Uh, and, and the key here is going, we are going to revisit, we're going to reassess, and we are going to adjust um, daily, weekly, biweekly, however necessary to make sure we are accommodating the concerns that 
students are incurring, teachers are incurring, parents are incurring. So this is a static process and by no means is anything I mentioned today uh, final and uh, non-negotiable. We will be working together with the parents to uh, collect feedback and we will be collecting feedback from our students as well, from our teachers as well. And really it has to be a team effort and we will make the, the necessary adjustments. All right, here we go. What school supplies will a fifth grader need for online? The school supplies, thank you for that question. School supply recommendations and list, I believe were, be, were posted or were in the process of being posted. If not, they will be posted by the end of the day. Okay, here's a question. I, I think they're just asking, is my child going to school? or online school, we'll have to follow up with that one. Yeah, um, if there's any question of clarity, please understand this is 100% online instruction uh, and it will be very important that parents um, are fully aware of the resources we have available to help those parents who don't have hardware at home. Uh, and we can talk more individually on, on that. Uh, the next question actually refers to that too. What do we do if we work from home and our children can't use the internet at the same time as the parents? Okay. So any type of hardships that w you are incurring with the home in environment and, and working, we totally and completely understand. Uh, we will accommodate, accommodate those, those uh, unique situations um, where students are either lacking hardware uh, or the uh, access to technology to make certain we get hard copies of the materials to them. Okay. okay. Is someone going to help with answering additional questions parents have and are things going to be handled differently this year? It's very hard when small children are in the house, so it tends to be very noisy. Are they going to handle that and understand our situation? We are going to handle anything that's thrown at us. That's who we are. Um, we will definitely work uh, hand in hand with families to make certain we find solutions to current obstacles that each family is, is incurring. Um, again, I'm not going to give a general response as to how I would respond to one individual situation, but definitely reach out to the administrators, make us aware of your situation and we will do everything we possibly can to accommodate your family needs. All right. How do I know if my child is registered for the new school year? You can easily contact the main office and again, uh, inquire and in making sure that um, they are enrolled. And if they are not enrolled, we will get them enrolled if they are part of the Riverside Middle School District. Okay. How can my fifth grader get a Chromebook? So again, going back to the Chromebook distributions, it is by a priority need basis, and that's being determined by the free and reduced lunch um, eligibility. Uh, and we are starting there and working our way up. So all students will receive it eventually. If they need it, if they require it, we will, we will get it to you but it, it will be on an as needed basis and we will do our best to do that in the timeliest manner possible. I don't have a specific date, but we will do it in the timeliest, uh, timeliest manner. Okay. When will my fifth grader get his schedule? So the schedules as mentioned previously, um, at the earliest tomorrow evening at the latest Friday evening. Uh, this uh, may be the same question. Um, how does a new student log into the student portal for the schedule? So login information for the student portal um, and Parent Connect and Student Connect, I will ensure that directions are included in the letter I do send home to parents later this evening. All right. Um, how do I know the schedule for my child in middle school this year? I think we've answered that. 
how will each grade run? Will the majority of them do packets and online, or will it be split? I think and I just want to emphasize that um, there will be packet distributions uh, scheduled for next week. We will be handing out the first two-week packets for students requiring hard copies. Um, we do have currently, I believe, the numbers are about one-third of our student population, 460 students, require Chromebooks. Um, and until we have Chromebooks in the hands of all students, um, we will definitely be relying on the hard copies and the students following along on the Google Classroom. Okay. okay. How do we know the school? How do you know the school schedule for online will work? I, I, maybe they're asking how will the schedule work? I think we talked about that too. So yes, um, the school day begins at 8.09, ends at 2.53. Students will be required to attend six periods of school, not meaning that they will be there the entire 45 minute periods. There will be a 30 minute or a 45 minute lunch uh, in the after the third hour period for all students. Um, and then again, the checkout tutorial may not be the entire hour and may be reserved for students requiring additional assistance. Um, so for clarity purposes, any questions you have, please call the main office and call me directly and I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Okay. okay. This is my son's first year at Riverside, but I don't have parent student portal account. How can I get one? As mentioned, I will make sure to give you that information prior to the end of the day. Okay, here's another question very similar coming from Hillcrest. Yep. When will laptops be distributed? I think we've talked about that. Um, why do you have forums during the workday that are two hours? Parents need to work and can't be on a Zoom call for two hours. Very, very good point. And I'm not asking, these are um, asking parents to take two hours of their day. Just a great opportunity to jump in for the beginning. I just wanted to keep open a window in case uh, the questions kept streaming in. Uh, make sure all your questions were answered. This will be recorded and posted on the school website. And my apologies if I interrupted your day. Thank you. Okay, will the daily school schedule be flexible for working families? We have to be, we have to be flexible. And again, um, that's why we gave teachers the flexibility uh, to really accommodate the needs of the students as well as accommodate their teaching style. Uh, it is not going to be one size fits all in the classroom, and it is going to be teacher dependent. In that conversation, when there are instances where there's conflict, uh, communicating with the teacher will be paramount and the most effective route to um, resolve that, that issue or that uh, conflict. Okay. okay. Um, here's another question about MyStar and when the students are added. Um, when will we get Chromebooks? We talked about that. When will we get info about sending kids to school due to working parents? I think they're talking about the daycare situation. The child care is now, the logistics of child care are now looking, being uh, closely uh, looked at and areas are defined. Um, I think there has to be and will be a verification process coming out shortly um, that parents will have to submit again, um, proof of, of work, um, the length of time that they will require child care and so forth. So logistically speaking, it is uh, some, please expect something by the end of the week um, or early next week prior to the start of the, the school, uh, school year. Okay. Are band students going to attend in person? Everything is going to be um, virtual. Uh, band students will be working uh, to pick up their instruments. Band students will be working with Ms. Rashul to pick up their instruments. And um, yes, further information will be, will be provided by the band instructors. 
Okay. I have three children. I'm a working mother and my husband works too. What should I do and how can I manage everything with kids at home? Um, I'm not going to speak to any specific scenario, but I can tell you, please reach out to the office. We do have resources. We do have social workers. We do have um, liaisons that could definitely uh, guide you in the, in the right direction and we will support you with anything we have available to our, our disposal. All right, here's a question. How will school be, how will they be studying? How long will they be studying each day? We talked about that. Um, how will teachers work with students? I think we've discussed that too. I have one laptop at home and two kids in school, plus I use it too. Okay, I think we talked about that. Just a, just a quick reminder and comment, um, please, when you have those extenuating circumstances, please communicate to the teachers and let them know so we can make accommodations for these, these students uh, until they get a Chromebook, until they have access to the internet. We want to accommodate your needs. We don't want students to feel excluded um, and we will do everything we can to make sure they have the hardware they need uh, to enjoy the virtual learning experience. Okay. Uh, here's another question about um, username and password for the parent portal. So we know we're working on that. How do we go about informing the school and the teachers if our children has a doctor's appointment that can't be canceled or changed? Yes, absolutely. And just, uh, I did cover that and calling the attendance office as you would on a normal school day, following those same procedures um, we'll definitely, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take care of that issue. We'll mark them as an excused absence and move forward. Okay. How am I supposed to provide electronics for all of my kids? Um, I was supposed to have one child at home, but now I have three. What do we do if the internet goes out? Which is likely because our internet is horrible. Very valid concerns. Again, um, we want to be there and support you 100% um, of the time. Uh, the hardware, we can get that. The internet, uh, something that I have no control over. But again, um, finding a solution where we can accommodate your children's needs, whether that's in a hard copy, that we provide your children with hard copy of instructional materials, then we will have to, we will do that. All right. Um, why do kids need to be up so early when there's no buses and they won't be leaving home? And will all day really be necessary with everything else they have to deal with? Yeah, so the school schedule is a window. Um, now, that does not mean that those students will be on the computer the entire time, uh, but they will be um, engaged in learning in one way or another. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be on the computer. They could be tasked by the teacher to interview their parents or interview their brother or sibling or sister or neighbor uh, and, and write a report on it and submit it. Um, these are things that we are encouraging teachers to make certain that any lessons we put forth are home friendly uh, and do not require a computer um, when and where possible. Now, again, this is something new to everyone and there will be an adjustment, but that's why we're asking for parents' feedback. Too much, too little, not enough. Um, this is gonna be critical and that's why we will be surveying our parents to make sure we're receiving uh, feedback that's gonna help us improve the, the process for everyone. Okay. okay. Uh, how do I see my son's <laughs> schedule? Is it the same MyStar info we used last year? It is absolutely the same, um, and you will be able to see your son's schedule uh, hopefully by tomorrow evening. Okay. Um, does my son have to stay in front of the computer during the whole school time? Can he finish his assignments after school, or does he have to finish them within the school time? So that's all. Um, number one, it won't be the entire school day by no means. Uh, they will have to attend um, the start of that period as they would any class period. 
the teacher will give them further direction. Uh, and when things are due, uh, when things are have to be submitted, um, and it's all teacher based. So the teacher will be very clear in their expectations and the students will be expected um, to follow them. Okay, this is a similar question. Will the children visually be connected with the teachers for the entire school day or will the teacher simply be available for online? Yes, and again, I'm just going to comment uh, what all the research says is maximum middle school students should be on the screen no more than two and a half hours a day. Uh, we are going to do our best to keep it or limit it to no more than two and a half hours a day of screen time. Uh, the asynchronous learning, again, will involve tasks that have to be completed without a computer, without a screen, and that's going to be teacher driven. Um, and your feedback to the teachers as well, whether we're at too much, too little, uh, that's going to be valuable in, in our improving our processes school wide. Okay. okay. Will the parents receive a syllabus or outline for what the teacher intends to teach? And if so, uh, oh, if so, we can supplement that at home. Absolutely. And thank you for that. Um, the teachers will be providing a syllabi or syllabus, uh, and it will be posted on their website. Additionally, they will be posting biweekly lesson plans that are giving the students and the parents a very good idea of what is being, uh, what is the unit focus? What is the instructional standards that are being taught? Um, and parents are free to do what they would like with that uh, to enrich those activities and those content areas. Okay. okay. Uh, here's a question about going to school in person or is it strictly online? For the Board of Education, the governor, the CDC, and all the information we used in making this determination, we felt it uh, the safest and most prudent way to move forward um, for the first trimester. Now again, things can change as they always do, um, and we have to respond to the um, confines that we are being placed under with this whole COVID-19 pandemic in place. Um, it is 100% online and the determination will be made by the Board of Education and Dr. Masalam as to when we return face-to-face. -face. Uh, and we look forward to seeing all of you face-to-face -face because the one thing I miss most about my job uh, are the students, um, and I truly do. And uh, this is not my typical uh, forum uh, that I would like to be speaking to my parents because I'm looking at a blank screen now. So um, that doesn't uh, do too much for me as an administrator who loves children, who wants our children to succeed, who thrives on the energy that flows through a building during a school day. Our teachers want that, I want that, our administration, our counselors, our, everyone loves children and we wanna see them back in school just as long as it's in a safe environment. Okay, this is probably a question we need to follow up on later. I need help with Google Meet. I don't know what to do for my children this year, probably needs help with the whole technology aspect. Yes, and, and as I mentioned with the uh, parent expectations, parents um, definitely need to be part of the trainings that we provide for parents because we're about educating not only students, but also parents. We understand the struggles that you're dealing with and maybe being on a learning curve with the technology and we're gonna do our best with tutorials um, and opportunities for professional learning uh, to take place at the parent level just as much as it is at the student level. Okay, and a, a similar follow-up. I need help and Chromebooks for my children. Um, I think we've talked about that. How do we get schedules? Yep. Yeah. Um, how do we get our stuff from the lockers? We addressed that today. If both parents work, are the kids expected to do work online by themselves? So we are trying, again, um, we talked about that checkout tutorial being critical uh, to making certain that students' questions are answered before they leave. Um, and they're giving the help before they leave for the end of the school day. We want to limit, not to say that there, it's going to completely eliminate, we want to limit the number of questions uh, parents are bringing forth to their, 
their students are bringing forth to their parents and asking for help with. Sure, my students, do, my children do it with me. They are always asking me for guidance, advice, uh, more so than explaining the lesson, giving them that guidance and advice is hopefully what we can limit the parents' uh, role at the home to just giving advice, not actually having to explain the content uh, in the learning. Okay. And the same person is asking, I have only one desktop computer, but three kids. Do they have to all be logged on at the same time? Yes. And we are going to try to get that hardware to the families ASAP. We understand the hardships that you're incurring, and uh, we are going to be as sympathetic as possible. But the first two weeks, our packets will be distributed. So there will be learning materials that the students can be working on when they are limited to access uh, the Google Classroom. Okay. Um, I do want to say one side note as well, Mr. Green, is uh, we are looking at how we can actually have students, if they do not have a Chrome, um, a Chrome book per se, they can still access the audio portion of that on the phone. So they can get the instruction audio, just not with the video. Um, so we are uh, definitely, we have a good plan there and we will be sharing a number with a pen um, but then I have to discuss that with Dr. Masalam because um, of security issues. So, uh, and other people um, logging in. And uh, so we're working on trying to solve all these, these problems and there's no easy fix to the hardware issue, but getting you hardware. And that's our main priority right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, for new students, are you sending login information for the student portal? Yep, yeah, we talked about that. How do we ask the student portal? I think we've talked about this. How is online learning this year? Is, will it be the same as last year? The teacher just shows up and asks the students what they do, or will it be actual learning like they used to teach in the classroom, but now online? Yes, and again, uh, I go back to that earlier statement of balance. Um, we cannot, ex we are focused on first and foremost building the relationship as hard as that is virtually. That is an emphasis for our staff. Secondly, it has to be about making certain that those students have the technology skills that are associated with Google Suites. Finally, the essential standards that the students and grade levels and, and disciplines identify um, is going to be the focus. This is going to be new learning. This is not a um, harm-free environment. This is th th these are standards specific to the grade, specific to the content that they will be learning uh, in the virtual classroom. So it's absolutely important that they attend every single day they complete the assignments, they ask the questions. This is going to be a classroom, just in a different format. So the face-to-face -face learning that they've been accustomed to their entire life is gonna be intact. It's just gonna be through a different format that we all have to get used to uh, and adjust as, as we go, um, go through the process. But um, again, feedback, teamwork, flexibility is gonna be paramount. All right. How are we starting the first day of class? Will it be via Zoom? If so, where can I find the login information? Very good question. So and, first day. Yeah, sorry, the same person is asking when they'll receive a Chromebook. We've talked about that. Yes, the first day of school, um, hopefully all, by the time the students will get their their schedules. They will know their teams. We will have the, um, the access to the, um, the teacher website will have access. The students will have the Google Classrooms assigned when their student login is put into play uh, and they will be accessing or able to access their teacher's Google Classroom. Um, I don't want to misspeak at this point in time. I just want to confirm that many different working variables are in place. Uh, so I don't want to commit to every single student. 
um, having access to that Google Classroom if, number one, hardware is going to be an issue, we're not going to have. That's why we are going to schedule um, packet pickups by grade level, by subject, um, in the early part of, of next week. So we have that schedule. We'll be sharing it with parents, and hopefully we'll be able to get those um, learning packets in the hands of students by Monday. Uh, and that's when we have it scheduled, but unfortunately it's weather dependent. It will be a curbside pickup and it will have the information of the student and um, the teacher's login information will be intact as well. All right. Will my fifth grader schedule be on Zoom or Google Docs? So the fifth grader's schedule will be in Student Connect and it will be available in Parent Connect as well. And I will make sure that you have that um, login information by the end of the day. Okay. okay. Another question about Chromebooks. Um, will extra steps be taken for incoming fifth graders to get familiar with the school um, and a tour when and if in-person learning resumes? That's a very good question, and thank you for asking. Um, the, the, the response to that is when in-person learning uh, begins, whenever that may be, uh, it will be a transitional period. And we plan during that transitional period to make certain that every fifth grader has the opportunity in a structured manner to come and walk through the school and familiarize themselves with their their classroom, their teachers, and absolutely, we will be looking forward to that. Um, in the meantime, after things settle down, we'll definitely be introducing them in a virtual, um, in a virtual way. Maybe you know, making our own Google Hangout with Mr. Schneider and I, uh, walking through the building, uh, and, and, and introducing all the different wonderful things of Riverside Middle School. All right. Okay. Here's another question about uh, a concern about Chromebooks and other districts have been giving all students Chromebooks um, and we still really don't know what's happening. Please update us, but I, I think we've covered that. And one thing I just want to side note, and I, I know Dr. Masalam has covered it in his board meetings. Um, we are not the only district that are requesting Chromebooks in, in the thousands. Um, every school district in the state of Michigan and probably through the country of the United States um, has placed an order uh, for Chromebooks. Um, the majority of Chromebooks are assembled in Taiwan and they're dealing with a lot of their own struggles. So it's, uh, it's supply and demand. It really comes down to supply and demand. And I, I commend the Board of Education, Dr. Masalam, for being proactive um, because there are many districts at a disadvantage, a significant disadvantage, uh, they haven't even placed their orders in yet um, for whatever reason. Uh, but thanks to the school board and, again, Dr. Masalam being proactive and ordering these in a timely fashion, we are able to um, get them out to families ASAP. But it's going to be on a priority needs basis, as we said. But our vision is to have a, a, a new Chromebook for every student in the Crestwood Public Schools. Okay. Uh, here's another Chromebook question. How do I request one? How would they actually go about um, identifying themselves as needing one? Um, very good question. And we are starting again um, with a priority needs based on uh, the students and families that are uh, pre-certified to receive free and reduced lunch. Those are at-risk students um, per the economically disadvantaged and we are going to do it incrementally and according to need. It was the only fair process that um, we, we felt was, was appropriate at this time. Uh, if, again, um, if we receive all 4,000 of them, we will distribute them in the, in the timeliest manner. But we're only, you know, they're coming in in shipments and we have to do what's right by the entire community. And we do apologize for anyone who's delayed in, in receiving one, but eventually, hopefully, we can get them to all the families. And would they call the Riverside office to do that, to uh, request one? 
Actually, we've we've received um, our list, and, and, and okay. we've, we are currently in process of identifying the families and confirming um, the the rank order of who will and where will this be distributed first, uh, and going in it going at it in a systematic way. Okay. If I want to make changes to an elective on my student schedule, how could I do that? That all depends on uh, what elective we are talking about. There are not going to be electives other than uh, the students are going to be actually subjected to multiple electives every trimester. They'll be subjected to three different electives in a 12-week period. Um, this is the virtual schedule that is in play currently with the exception of the year-long classes, meaning Arabic, meaning Spanish. Um, also, um, we have Spanish one and Spanish two students. Uh, we're gonna make sure they get the high school credits that they deserve. And we, are, and we also have band as well. Now, if students are enrolled in two year-long classes, say band and Arabic, they will still continue to receive band and Arabic. Okay. okay. Uh, another question about multiple students, but not enough Chromebooks. Um, and can you make sure they get it this year? So we've talked about that. How many hours will they be on the Google Meet every day? I think we've That's talked an, about that. We've talked about that. And I want to remind you that, <laughs> albeit every period is 45 minutes, that period is going to be split uh, in balance between the synchronous and asynchronous learning. And we are going to try to limit the overall screen time to two and a half hours for our middle schoolers. Okay. Um, if we don't have the Chromebooks, how do, we, how do my kids start the first day of school? We address that. Um, what time is material pick up for working parents? Yes, we're always understanding um, there will be working parents. There will be working parents that are working in the PM versus the AM and vice versa. Um, we are here to accommodate your schedule and we'll do whatever is necessary to make sure you have the opportunity to pick up materials, uh, whether it be a, a Chromebook for your child or materials, hard copies and the like. So um, making sure you're communicating your need, we'll make sure we respond in kind. And can other people um, beside the parent pick up the material? There's something that's very important, and this is why updating your information, whether it be phone numbers and uh, emails, you should also consider uh, updating uh, emergency contact information. And we will get you that information. We cannot release any material to any student unless um, it is number one communicated by the parent and those persons are listed on the emergency uh, emergency cards. Um, so please, once you receive that, those information, fill them out as, as accurately as you possibly can and, and complete as you possibly can so we can make sure our records are updated in MyStar and reflect the parent's wishes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, when can we clean out our lockers? I think we talked about that. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Um, cleaning out the lockers. We are going to have a schedule. Again, we're hoping for next week. We will share that schedule with you later this evening when I send a follow-up letter to our meeting uh, and give you the answers you require. We do have a schedule intact. I just want to confirm um, that we don't prematurely schedule and have the weather uh, the weather be um, rain or um, put a stop or hold on that locker to clean out. 1,200 lockers are a lot of lockers to clean out. And we really have to be structured in the way we do it. And we have to follow social distancing guidelines, safety guidelines, uh, and they have to be done. Um, and we will do it by grade level, but also by last name. So there will be windows of time that, that the students will have to come in. It'll be a shorter window, uh, but this is something that we have to do. We cannot have more than 100 students or 100 persons in the building at any one time. 
and um, we will do it. We will get it to you, and we will definitely convey the the format on how we are going to do that in the safest possible manner. Okay. When can we pick up band instruments? This will be communicated uh, by the band teacher, and um, I'm not going to comment on uh, what she has scheduled. So it's uh, she's teaching multiple grades, year-long band, and I'm sure she wants to do it in a structured and safe way as well. Okay. Um, another question about Chromebooks. Um, locker clean out. We just covered that. What about kids who need face-to-face -face or a more controlled environment for learning? My kid will fall through the cracks because she cannot focus and I work, so I cannot make sure she does. Why not offer in-person to those who need it? Again, um, these are determinations that were made uh, and we were um, cognizant of those concerns and, and parents. Uh, and thank you for that question because there are many students who would prosper in a face-to-face -face more so than a virtual environment. Um, what we can do is I can't change the here and now, but I can tell you we can offer as much support to that child as we possibly can. And the communication, as I stated, with the teacher and the support staff will be paramount. Um, that is something we're committed to, and we understand this is not an ideal situation for any child. And we do not want any child learning through a computer screen. Uh, we look forward to the day where we return face to face um, and we can hear the vibrations of, of love and learning taking place in the hallways of, of Riverside Middle School. And we will get there uh, with a little hope and, and God's blessings, we'll, we'll make it. Uh, so I apologize for you having to go through that, but um, patience, communication, we will definitely support your child and make certain they don't fall through the cracks, whatever it takes. Okay. Okay. Um, when will children get physical textbooks? If not, can we request them for special needs kids? Absolutely. Again, this is gonna be about communicating um, your needs to the teacher, uh, to the support staff here at Riverside Middle School. Um, we're here to serve. We are all committed to making certain that children are learning uh, regardless of, of what tools they need uh, we are going to work together as a team and make certain that they have the tools they need to be successful. Okay. This, uh, this is a similar question. What accommodations are being made for special needs kids? Special needs, all accommodations will be made. Uh, the teachers that support the special needs kids will be co-teaching um, with the core area teachers, and they also will be providing additional support during the checkout um, tutorial period and making certain their children are receiving all the support they need to be successful. Okay. I think we've covered this, but um, this question asks, are the students going to attend school for the first two weeks in person? Um, no in-person learning, 100% virtual and the communication, um, we are gonna do our best to reach out and communicate with families, introduce ourselves, hold vir virtual parent meetings and um, make certain that we're making it as, um, as normal as normal can get in this situation. So um, no personal face-to-face -face instruction uh, will be taking place. Okay. Uh, and here's a question about accessing the parent portal. We've talked about that. Um, my son's on an IEP. Now what do we do? Any child that has an IEP 504 plan or any other child that has um, a plan in place will receive every service they're entitled to bar none. Uh, we are committed again to providing them, albeit in a different format, um, they will receive the support services, whether that be speech, uh, occupational therapy, uh, and the like. Um, they will be receiving their entitlement and entitled services, and we look forward to helping them be successful as well. Uh, them meaning all students. Any child that requires support will receive it. And I, I, I give you my word on that. We will do everything we can to support, whether special ed, bilingual, general ed, 
children are children and their needs are our needs and we will meet those needs. Okay. Um, some more questions about logging into the parent portal. That information's coming. Um, checking out laptops. When will students get their schedules? Um, my husband and I both work full time. I'm working on my fellowship as well. I usually don't get home before seven. My mom doesn't speak English and doesn't have the capability to teach my kids. What is your solution for this issue? We, uh, we again, uh, we don't want parents being the teacher. That's our job. Uh, we don't want grandparents or caregivers to be the teachers. We want the teachers to be teachers. And when there are questions, when there are concerns, when their help is needed, the checkout tutorial uh, is our answer to that. They will have the option to receive the support before they leave for the school day. So they're not asking grandma who doesn't speak English to help them with algebra or trigonometry or geometry or uh, what have you. So we have it here. And if that support is not happening, please communicate to us and, and we will make sure any supports that are needed are received. Okay. okay. And good luck on your phone. Uh, fifth grade students in band this year. How does it work online? Again, I'm not going to comment on the, um, the band. Uh, I haven't seen it work live, so I can't hardly say, but the teacher has a plan. Miss um, Rashulas has um, 30 plus years of experience and, and God bless her. Uh, she has a very good handle on her approach with band and she will be communicating that with any student um, that is scheduled for her class. So. Uh, stay tuned, more to come, and I promise um, they will not be disappointed. Okay. Um, another question about scheduling and Chromebooks. Um, will all teachers be following the same curriculum and schedule? I mean, maybe the same, the same subject with different teachers. Are they following the same curriculum? Absolutely, uh, and this is a, a big push with the Riverside School uh, Middle School is, is the team approach and teams of teachers uh, will be collaborating not only as a team, but then we will also be collaborating as a subject area, meaning all language arts teachers will be getting together and sharing resources and ideas and methodologies for instructing ELA. Science will do the same, social studies the same, math the same. Uh, we are trying, again, uh, we will be uh, working collaboratively throughout this entire uh, year and into the far, into the reaching future. Um, our team, it's, we're all about team. We're all going to be about team uh, from the teachers to the students, to the families, to the parents. We have to be a community and a family, and, and that's what families do. Uh, they, they become a team with the school, and, and our teachers are committed to that. And we look forward to great things happening at Riverside. Okay. okay. More questions about Chromebooks and schedules. What's the plan for special education? How will the students learn online? Is the school district planning to see special needs students in face to face at least once a week? The uh, special education students, again, will be serviced according to their IEP requirements. Um, for more specific questions, uh, Ms. Andrea O'Hara will be um, glad to sit down or meet or speak with any parent uh, that requires additional information and has specific scenarios. Answering the special ed uh, question with a one-size-fits-all approach uh, it's it's not <laughs> it's not going to help. It'll probably confuse more than it will help. But if you have specific questions about your child's special needs, um, please reach out to the director of special education. Uh, and we will be able to answer it together and and make certain that your child is receiving the service they're entitled to. All right. Good. Mm -hmm. good. Are teachers meeting the kids to do lectures about subjects? I think we've covered that. 
Um, if any student needs help in a, in a subject like math, how can they get help? As previously stated, the checkout tutorial uh, is going to be the opportunity for students. It's built into the schedule. Um, we're all students that are identified as, as struggling during the primary instruction, regardless of period. Uh, we'll have the opportunity to, uh, the teacher will identify them for a small group of instruction in that content area at the end of that day. Um, again, we're going to start uh, there and evolve uh, as time goes on so we can see more students. It will not be the same students. And that's what I want to emphasize here. It will be for students that have been identified by the teacher as struggling um, in, in requiring help. So that sixth period is, is, uh, is a, um, a great opportunity to reach so many of these kids that were struggling with the tier one instruction and will require support to do well. We want to help as, as often and as necessary as possible. And we've built that into the schedule, which I'm very excited about. Okay, and here's a question about the schedule. Um, why can't teaching be live with students just as if the kids were in school? Why is there time built in for videos and independent work? What will the teachers be doing instead? Very, very good question. And um, we, we have to, again, go, go with the research. And the research... Um, has stated time and again that elementary students should not be subject to more than two hours of screen time. Um, middle school, no more than two and a half to three hours, and high school, three to three and a half hours. Uh, we have to understand that screen time adversely affects brain development, um, and we definitely, this is well documented, and I definitely want, don't want to go into that conversation, uh, but teachers will be doing the things that are associated with maintaining their classroom, uh, preparing lessons, making certain that they're providing feedback to students, uh, doing all the other thing, thousand and one things they're responsible for. I can guarantee you many of our teachers have already been here. They've been setting up their classrooms. They've been preparing lessons. They've been doing all the things uh, that teachers do. And they, they never say... Um, they never say a word or never want uh, credit. They're just do it because they love their job. They love being teachers and they love children. And um, again, uh, going back to the original question, we definitely do not want kids on the screen for extended periods of time. Uh, if you look at my eyes, I've been on the computer for probably 12 hours a day for the past two months. And I, I can see bags that were never there. <laughs> Uh, and I attribute that to screen time. It, it truly does uh, cause the brain to um, wire itself differently, if I may, uh, summing it up. And I would um, truly look at some of the medical research involved with extended screen time and what it does to children. There are volumes of that. So thank you for that question. All right. Will the attendance system be utilized so we know if a child was not accounted for during each hour? Absolutely. Uh, attendance will be taken at the beginning of the hour. I also want to mention as well that um, things such as exit tickets will be used to monitor students' engagement throughout the lesson, um, and they will have to be required at times to complete exit tickets, and teachers will be using that as a form of attendance as well. Um, many different ways to account. Um, for students being uh, present. Um, but again, uh, some of the criteria we talked about with the technology, camera on, um, mic off, that type of thing, um, we definitely want uh, to follow the guidelines established by the classroom teacher. All right. Why are there more days off this school year? I have... Um, I have not looked at the calendar days off, so I'm glad someone has. Um, I have not really compared last year's calendar to this year's calendar. I do know this year's calendar incorporates more professional development for teachers, um, which I am a complete proponent of and feel that is very uh, necessary for us to continue our uh, lifelong learning 
and make sure we're adjusting to the, the needs of the community as well. Well, that's, you must be a mind reader because the very next person from or the same person, different question, what training has been done for teachers so they're capable of online learning? Great question. And um, again, many teachers have already went through the Google Sites training. Uh, they already have websites actually in place. Um, but now it's going to be used, universally used across our district which is a great thing because we already have that learning base. Uh, Google has done a phenomenal job since the distance and online learning uh, took shape in spring. They've added many um, extensions and add-ons to it, which we will be providing teachers professional development these next two days, beginning tomorrow and also Friday. Um, teachers will be setting up their website. They will be um, you know, updating and, and uploading their syllabus and, and their lesson plans and doing all the things that are associated with maintaining their own Google website. So uh, they are, all the, all the professional development is aimed at making certain the teachers are where they need to be with their skill set and they can then convey that skill set to the students. So much appreciate that question. Okay. Okay. What can a parent do if they feel the teacher is not providing adequate instruction? Thank you for that question. And again, um, the conversation starts with the teacher. First and foremost, I'm an administrator that doesn't like um, serving as the middleman. I will always have my door open for my parents, but the conversation has to start with the teacher. Communicating with the teacher, reaching out to the teacher, figuring out um, what is exactly happening because I can tell you 22 years of starting my 22nd year, I know that things can be easily tweaked to make it um, sound like a whole nother story. So take a minute, give the teacher an opportunity to, to hear her side and what the, the facts are and then come up with a solution. We have to focus on solutions. Um, we identify a problem, focus on the solution, we're gonna be in a good place. And I can guarantee you 99% of the time, give the teacher the respect and uh, they deserve and, and have the conversation with them and they'll be able to clarify um, the, the details regarding any scenario. All right. Why were the Chromebooks ordered so late when the district website stated that they were ordered as part of the plan from last spring? I think we've covered that. Uh, Chromebooks, I think we've talked about this too. What if you're a full-time working parent and you can't get there for pickup, what do you do? Or can, they, can, can materials be delivered at home or on a Saturday? Yes, we, will, um, we will accommodate individual schedules. Uh, we are not going to deliver to the home, but we will accommodate um, a normal uh, schedule when the parents, uh, if they, you know, maybe even just thinking off the cuff here, um, they want to ask a neighbor uh, to pick up um, a packet, um, but uh, notify the office. That wouldn't be a bad way to do it. But I understand there are extenuating circumstances. I just don't want to make it a universal approach and causes complete chaos with 1,200 families. So um, if you have extenuating work conditions or circumstances that you're dealing with, identify uh, that through the main office and we will come up with a plan to accommodate you. Okay. okay. Um, I'm a full-time working mom. My son doesn't have a computer. Paper packets get lost and ruined because of ADHD. What solution can you give me? Again, uh, I'm, I'm simply going to go back to my initial statement of being patient. Our plan is to get that hardware in the students' hands in the soonest possible time frame. Um, we will be identifying those students. We definitely want a focus on uh, the kids in the, the elementary uh, in the middle school uh, to, to have those learning tools in place. And we are working feverishly behind the scenes. And God bless our tech department and all the Technicians, they're really working on overdrive, uh, doing the best they can to prepare um, 
vote for the distribution. So thank you. Okay, so another question about packets and Chromebooks and school hours. Um, what's the plan for students under the autism spectrum because online only is not healthy for them? They need one-on-one -on -one support, and thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for that comment. And again, I, I don't want to comment on specific conditions or specific or individual cases, but if there are hardships, whether it be bilingual or special or to five to four or a health disability, please reach out to our coordinators. They're here to support Ms. Uh, Ms. Jawad um, and Ms. Andrea O'Hara are, are wonderful people. They'll be glad to accommodate your needs uh, in general. So thank you. Okay. Uh, some questions about schedules, um, the parent portal. My daughter was in the CAP program. Now she's in fifth grade. Will she be taking advanced math and ELA? Yes, students uh, identified in the CAP program uh, will continue their advanced ELA and advanced mathematics um, if they have qualified. So, absolutely. Mm, this person is asking, she said she said her son did not need a laptop, but now he needs one. Um, I'm trying to call the school. I think we've talked about that. Yes, so again, just to, to reemphasize, every child who requires hardware will receive one eventually, but we are prioritizing who gets what first. Uh, and that's dependent on their pre-certification for free and reduced lunch. Um, that's what we're using as a measure for need. So thank you. Okay. Mm. Hey, these are just kind of variations on the subjects we've covered. Uh, are the students going to get more time with the teachers online more than a half hour today to get the help they need? Is there going to be assignment and homework and help they need from the teachers? And when can the students clean their lockers? Yeah, I think we've covered that. Uh, fifth graders who are now who are in the CAP program, same question. Here's some real detailed questions. What are some of examples of typical assignments and deadlines? The typical assignments and deadlines, as I said, it's not going to be a one size fits all. Um, the, each individual teacher will clearly define her classroom expectations and the way they will run their classroom uh, via their classroom syllabus and their biweekly lesson. This is going to be a variation from teacher to teacher. We do not want to take away the creativity from teachers. And we want teachers to have the capacity to make certain that any lessons are relevant to the home environment and students have the tools at home where they can actually complete the assignments and do it in an asynchronous way, not necessarily uh, in front of a screen. So, I, I like this parent. They have uh, several questions here. Um, in terms of time and work, are the overall expectations the same or different from a face-to-face -face learning? We have to um, really put the balance piece back into play. Uh, nothing is going to replace face-to-face -face learning. You can say what you want, but I'm telling you, and being as transparent as an educator, um, so many things um, you know, are dependent on the face-to-face -face that we can't replace that in a virtual platform. The bottom line comes to, it comes back to student safety. Until the environment is safe, and I know you read the news and you've seen all those scenarios that are happening with school districts that are opening and having to shut down the, the very next day, uh, just think of how traumatic that would be to a child um, and what social, emotional, and, and mental, um, 
hardships they would incur having to go to school for one day, shut down for three, come back for a day, shut down for another three. Those are the inconsistencies we're talking about that are not going to do children any good and it's sure not going to do families, working families, single parents that have to accommodate um, those, those scenarios. So my apologies. I, I just have to be transparent and this is my personal, not my professional, but my personal opinion. Um, let's just simply make certain as much as we all want to go back face to face and believe me, no one wants to do it more than I, um, we need to do it in a safe and responsible way. Okay. okay. How do I check my, track my child's progress? And as um, Parent Connect, uh, you will have access to everything uh, linked to your child's student ID um, when uh, and if um, media finds or what they ate for lunch or their attendance, their uh, report card, their schedule, you will have information once you log into Parent Connect. All right. <laughs> Does school provide reminders and other kind of support to help kids who are having trouble getting or staying organized? Very excellent question. Again, um, this is uh, the, the organizing part. I think the virtual platform is gonna be very helpful uh, once the students have the technology skills to be able to organize their things in folders and. Uh, not talking about materials such as notebooks and books and pencils, but actually virtually uh, being able to organize their Google folders in a, a coherent way. I think they're going to learn a lot of skills. And this is the silver lining with virtual learning. There are so many skills that are going to help students continue to grow and prosper with a virtual world uh, versus the hard copy of everything and, and having to try to stay organized. So for those kids who have a hard time organizing the hard copy materials, this is really going to be um, a great tool. Um, regardless, going back to the support, anything you need with support, we're gonna be able to, to identify supports and, and get you that help you need, whether it's with organization, whether it's with food at home, um, we will do our best to accommodate. Okay. Um, and some similar questions. What happens if my child misses a deadline? And again, every teacher is going to be different, and I'm not going to comment a one-size-fits-all. It is not a school policy to comment on um, teachers' policies with homework. Sometimes teachers accept late work. Sometimes uh, they say absolutely not. Sometimes they'll give it for partial credit. This has to go back to the teacher expectations, and students have to understand that exceptions will not be made. When a teacher has an expectation, that expectation is there for a reason. Um, and again, the conversation will have to be had with the teacher and not with the administrator. Okay. Um, how do teachers assist kids who ask for help? How often do they do things like hold extra help sessions or workshops? Absolutely. Um, so go back to our checkout tutorial period. Um, that is built in for that exact purpose is to provide help and support for students who are struggling. Uh, in regardless of, of whether or not they've been identified by the teacher, if they need help, they need to communicate that with the teacher. They need to let the teacher know, I did not understand what you just taught me. I need help understanding and clarifying. Uh, and we will do whatever we need to do to make sure your child gets help. We can no longer um, think it's, it's it's wrong to ask for help. We need to encourage our students to assert themselves and, and, and be humble as well. I mean, you're not gonna know anything. That's why we're in school, to ask questions, to ask for help, because we are not born knowing everything. We want our kids to start feeling the confidence they need to assert themselves as individuals and the individuality that comes with that. Ask their teacher for help. That's where the relationship building is gonna be so important. And teachers will all accept that. Um, that responsibility. They will be there for the children. All right. Um, this is a really good question. Does curriculum focus mainly on academics or are there 
social and emotional learning activities to help develop skills like self-advocacy and working in groups. And um, I am going to say our priority now and well into the future with our children will always be about um, the mental, social, emotional, and behavioral aspects in helping support that development within our child. Academics equally is important. They will be focused on standards, but we're about the whole child. I have to say, we need to do anything we can and everything we can to support all aspects of the whole child, which are the mental, social, the social emotional, behavioral, and, um, and, and as well as the academics, equally important, and we will do both. Okay. okay. Here's a question about um, getting into the parent portal, um, trying to reset the password, and it gives me an error. I, I David, I'll have you answer that. that. <laughs> we will we will address the parent portal and make sure all yeah. um, all options are active and, and parents are able to update their. Their, their their access information absolutely yeah. um i think we've talked about this will my child have to wake up at regular school time uh facing the computer and going from one session to another until the end of the school day yeah so remember it's not going to be the entire it the window is 809 to 253 they will have to make that the window of learning. Um, they will not be online 100% of that time. Please let me be clear with that. It's going to be the teacher uh, will be making up the schedule and, and really conform to that and communicate that with the parents and the students. So the, the teacher's expectation, the student expectations will be um, communicated clearly the parents will all understand there will be a schedule there will be the syllabus there will be the uh, lesson plan so um, absolutely not they will not be on the screen the entire day it will be a balance between live and um, live instruction which uh, the synchronous and asynchronous learning and tasks that they will have to complete in the home environment okay um could just send a weekly planner same as the syllabus, I suppose. Um, Lesson plans are there for, and if clarification is required, please contact the teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, and the teachers will respond within 24 hours to any communications that um, are received by parents. Okay. Uh, this is a pretty specific question. What kind of books could a fifth grader read? Um, Chromebooks. Who will be my son's teacher? We've covered schedules. Um, here's a question about coming from Highview, just to make sure that the student is in Riverside. One middle um, school. Right, right. Um, Chromebook, Chromebook. What took you so long to get the information to us? We expected to have more information ahead of time. And I appreciate that. And again, my apologies for the delay. Uh, we've been working feverishly because we were planning for multiple scenarios. So we were planning for face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, we were planning for virtual. We were planning for a hybrid. Um, and we had to wait uh, for guidance from the um, the Crestwood Board of Education, and things um, take time. <laughs> and I can promise you I've been working 14-hour days for the past two weeks since the announcement was made uh, to really address many different components um, in a building. Uh, there are many working parts uh, that take a lot of coordination if they're going to be done well. And I do set out to do things well and benefit the students. Um, it's never about me. It's always making choices for kids. Um, and our students are my number one priority and will always be my number one priority. So um, my apologies if it took too long and we've all been working tirelessly uh, to the 
to the extent that a human being can. So thanks for your patience, though. Appreciate that um, comment, and we're doing the best we can. I can assure you that. All right. What are we doing about improving communications between staff and parents? I, I do believe the, um, the parent portal um, will assist with that. Parents will have a one-stop shop, if I may, to access any teacher throughout the entire district, whether you have children, elementary, middle, and high school, they will be able to email them directly uh, and teachers will be expected to respond within 24 hours to a parent's inquiry. So keeping that communication, always keeping it constructive, uh, positive and, and um, really solution focused is going to do us all a great deal of good. And we will work as a team, we will find solutions that meet the students needs and we'll make sure we grow and move forward from that. Okay. Uh, this is a question from a student. Is it too late to change a class because we made a mistake when we picked? Um, nothing's ever too late, except if you turn your homework in too late and the teacher doesn't accept it. Uh, we will be working again. Um, the rotation schedule is going to look completely different than your normal um, set rotations. With the exception of the year long, every student at every grade will receive a four-week experience in three different rotations. So we're going to be exposing them, for instance, to art, to robotics, and to PE, all in the same trimester. This is going to really help students uh, get a better understanding of what that rotation is all about, what happens in drama. So they can make educated guesses when they do select their electives, later down the year uh, in the spring for the following year, they're going to have a, a really good working uh, understanding of what happens in robotics, what happens in coding, what happens in gaming, uh, because the teachers are going to let them know and they're going to provide them with a, a, a nice four week overview um, where they're going to get a, a clear understanding uh, of those happenings in those electives and they can make a, a calculated decision. But no, you can't, you can't change your electives now unless uh, if you were enrolled in a, a year-long band, a year-long Arabic, year-long Spanish, you will continue to be enrolled. But currently the rotations are on a four-week rotation and um, you will be exposed to three different ones. So please be patient. Okay. Uh, here's another question about um, students in the CAP program last year. Will that continue? We answered that. Um, my sister didn't get her student ID. I guess we're at asking about login for the portal. Um, how did we prepare teachers for the transition to online? Again, professional learning will be uh, ongoing and continuous. Um, and as previously stated, Teachers have had uh, training with Google Sites uh, and will continue to, to extend their learning uh, beginning tomorrow and Friday and well into the future. And the most important thing and type of training is teachers sharing with other teachers. And we're going to make certain that teachers have that time for collaboration um, and sharing of best practice and resource so we can continue to grow uh, and flourish. Okay. Um, Chromebook questions. Uh, cleaning out the lockers. We covered that. Um, when and where will Google Classroom codes be distributed for each class? And if the teacher will not be using Google Classroom, how will we know what they're using? So all, all teachers will be using Google Classroom. That's going to be a universal across the district. And again, Dr. Masalam and the Board of Education uh, wanted one platform and a universal platform, and it will be Google. So all, all teachers will be using Google Classroom and have a Google site established. Um, and we will be communicating access to those Google sites with the hard packet distributions and they will be posted on um, the syllabus and also the, the teachers, um, and, you know, lesson plans. 
And one thing I've asked teachers at Riverside Middle School to truly focus the first two weeks on uh, teaching those technology skills, access, resources, and how to manage the Google, uh, the Google Suites um, folders and, and truly become confident and competent in using that technology before we even move and transition into focusing on academics. The kids need to know how to use those technology tools. And we are going to be emphatic about that uh, so then we can all be uh, successful with the Google Suites. Okay. Can my daughter enroll in both band and robotics in the same year for fifth grade? Um, depending on where uh, Mr. Marabias and robotics will be assigned to, um, she may or may not have robotics uh, at the same time she has band. I do want to be emphatic about stating that this schedule that's currently in place uh, was created for virtual learning. This is not what's going to happen in face-to-face, -face, so I have to be very clear about that. There is another schedule that will be adopted once we do return to face-to-face -face instruction. And I don't want to confuse things now, but there were hundreds of hours spent on creating this schedule specific for the virtual learning um, aspect and not going to be the same format when we return face to face. So please um, understand that this is um, truly going to help the virtual learning um, situation that we face ourselves in and it was made for students to, to be successful. So your student in band, absolutely, um, will have the opportunity for the year long band, but also be exposed to three additional rotations in a 12 week period. All right. I don't feel like I have all the information for my fifth grader and it's making it hard to prepare. Well, we've given a lot today. <laughs> Yes, and I do, again, apologize for the delayed release. I, we needed to, again, come up with answers to the many questions I knew I'd be receiving today. Um, and that's why I wanted to hold this forum. And if there are any additional questions after this forum, my, my door is open. My phone is, is uh, here. I would gladly answer any specific questions that you may have and, and guide you in the right direction. So, All right. Um, this question is about, it says if the schedules come out Friday, how will the child and parent know how to get online on Monday? I think we've covered that. And Friday is the worst case scenario, but we're yeah. hoping for the best case scenario on, yeah. on by tomorrow evening. So. Okay. And will the teachers be sending emails to the child or will they need to go to each teacher's website? Yes, um, I'm not sure about, are we talking about the student or the parent? Parents, uh, yeah. will have access, again, parents will have access to the teacher regardless, um, and, and they're going to have access in multiple ways, whether that's an email, whether that's visiting the, the Google site, whether um, you know, you're, you're calling them uh, and leaving a message. That's gonna be, uh, again, we want parents to, to communicate with, with teachers and we'll do everything we possibly can um, to ensure you have several avenues to do so. Uh, this one says, how are the group teams going to be determined? Maybe they're talking about teaching teams. I'm not sure. Yeah, so the teaching teams, um, another quick explanation our focus was reducing the class size at every level. That was our focus when we began creating this virtual schedule and we have accomplished that focus. Um, we have class sizes where teachers are now able to service very small groups of students and provide them that one-on-one -on -one support or that small group instruction uh, that was absent in the face-to-face -face learning. Uh, our numbers are where they need to be, where, where teachers are going to feel comfortable doing that, and that's going to help the, the students significantly. So 
the teams were structured by highly qualified. They were all certified in the areas that they've been selected to teach. We took, again, uh, what their history was. We have many new staff members to Riverside Middle School. Um, you have a new principal here. Uh, I know every staff member's name very well, but now I haven't even put their name to their face um, and I'll, I'll continue being on the learning curve there. But going back to the team assignments, they're all highly qualified individuals um, who are certified in their area of instruction and who have many years of experience to go along with it. So I am very confident, um, whatever subject, whatever grade, you're gonna have a, a, a wonderful teacher teaching your child. Okay. Um, advanced math and English, we've talked about that. Ah, this is a good question. I don't want to pick up meals. Will there be a lunch card available like there was in the spring? Um, I don't know the answer to that, and I will inquire. Um, I've been trying to contact the guidance office and there's no response. Um, thank you for that. I know there are some settings that are still in place from uh, the, the, the summer. Uh, I'll make sure that all phones are active. And um, I do know, though, I do have Ms. Brinjicki and, and Ms. Davison working uh, very long hours right now on scheduling and pre-scheduling students before we load the schedule. Uh, it's a very entailing process and time consuming. So please uh, be patient with my counselors. I, uh, I have one focus right now. And if I am to get those schedules in the hands of parents in a timely manner, um, they need to be focused on simply scheduling right now. And I'm certain they will get back to you in the timeliest manner when they do receive your message. And my apologies for that. Um, I'll take the blame on that one. Okay. okay. Uh, is it five days of school or four days of school? So it is a five day uh, school week. And um, one thing I wanna emphasize is obviously with Labor Day coming up, um, we will have two four day weeks with the Monday or the Friday and the Monday, I believe. Um, and uh, no, it will be five day five day school days, <laughs> five days of school. Just and let, and we will be following the calendar. The district calendar was released, and it is posted on the Riverside Middle School website, and it is translated. Um, so please refer to the calendar. And those are the normal off days of, of the school year for planning purposes. Okay, good. Um, when will school supplies list be posted? Uh, if it's on the student portal, we don't have one yet. Um, I will make sure we post those. Um, my apologies if those haven't been posted. Uh, again, tomorrow's the first day, uh, official day back for, for teachers, and we will get them up as soon as possible. Okay, good. When will school open so I can return my library books? And uh, we will have a drop-off box in the front, so thank you for bringing that. And when we do have the locker clean-out, we will be asking all eighth graders who still have materials that belong to the school to return them at such time, uh, just for the record. So if there are library books, and, um, we will definitely be collecting them at that time, band instruments, that, that, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, this is kind of a twist on some answered questions. How many meetings are the kids going to have and are they going to be in different times? Because we have students from kindergarten to middle school. Um, yes, and that schedule uh, will be shared. Um, and I will put a sample, I will, I will place a sample student schedule in the letter I send this evening to parents. I hope that will clarify um, what a just a by period by time frame, but again, what happens in each one of those periods will be teacher dependent. So please keep that 
those two things are going to be separate. I've given you the framework. I will send that framework with the letter this evening, and that will be via electronically in an email. So mm -hmm. I will be using the InTouch portal. So I hope everyone has a working email on file uh, because you should receive something later this evening. Okay. And for the, for the record, I'm sorry, Mr. Green, um, all my, my communications are done via email to all the parents. I will be giving you weekly updates, um, keeping you abreast of any new developments, uh, any changes, any revisions, uh, and keeping you up to pace with any district or school related news. Yeah, so very Thank important you. to keep your email updated with school. That's why it's critically important. Working emails and phone numbers are critically important because I also do robocalls. Uh, my mode of operation with communicating with 1,200 families is robocalls um, and weekly updates via email. So please understand it will be critically important that your emails are up to date and are, um, are active and we're checking them often. Okay, this is a good question. How do my kids do NWEA and MSTEP? Excellent question. And um, for the time being, uh, all assessments, summative assessments have been put on hold. Uh, and we, we will not be concerned with um, those aspects until we have further guidance from Wayne County and, and the Michigan Department of Education. All right. Um, hmm, this is a good question. Will students be able to do online school if they're in a different state or overseas? Well, uh, that is a great question. And to, to be completely and utterly honest, I don't want to give the wrong answers and I'll check in with that. Um, but that individual who's out of, out of state or has that specific question, um, I, I believe there's a technical and a legal answer to that one, and I don't want to misspeak. So thank you for that. I will look into it, though. Um, but an absolute um, authentic question. Thank you. All right. Um, I think we've covered this. Are there breaks between classes? Yes. Each class period is uh, 45 minutes. And even if the teacher... Um, was teaching live for 45 minutes. We've also given a five minute transition um, and there is a 45 minute lunch and after the third period uh, and continued five minute transitions between the, the final uh, three classes. So built in breaks throughout, but definitely focusing on the scheduled start and end times is gonna be the, the most important thing we can do as parents uh, because as we said, the balance between synchronous and asynchronous, it's gonna be really important to know the start time and the end time of every classroom um, so we can transition and make sure the students are following that schedule and are not late to their classroom. Okay. Uh, some more questions about Chromebooks. Um, is it possible to have a smaller school day instead of six hours? Well, uh, you're asking for my professional response, and I'm going to say we are mandated by state law to provide uh, for child accounting purposes um, six periods of education, and that's what we are doing. So um, thank you for that question. Okay. And here's a question about whether we're online or not, because we have not got classes or gotten anything yet. But I think we've talked about that today. Um, will we be offering child care for a 13-year-old? The school I work for is opening back up, and I do not want to leave my 13-year-old at home alone. Thank you for that. And I do believe um, child care uh, is only going up to fifth grade. Um, I do not believe 13-year-olds are eligible for child care. And that's simply um, the direct answer for that. And I, I, I appreciate your concern, uh, but again, um, 
we do we just do not have the the capacity and, and uh, resources for for opening that up. Okay, this is a good question. Uh, can kids log in from their phone until they get a Chromebook? That's that's the pathway we are pursuing, and that's a great question and comment. And um, the only thing that, again, I will be seeking approval for is the security issue. Uh, because um, that phone um, access with a uh, universal PIN uh, could cause problems. Okay. Um, will I ready be ready for students to use right away? I ready. Um, I am going to put that conversation on the back burner. Uh, that is something that's going to be determined by our superintendent. And I can simply tell you the superintendent and Bestwood Board of Education, um, they are committed to getting the instructional resources uh, that staff and students um, will truly benefit from. And from my previous experiences with iReady, uh, I definitely think that's a great platform. Okay. Uh, and this parent uh, says, not a question, but thank you for giving us all of this good information. That's and, nice. Yeah, that's very nice. And you just put a smile on my face. So yeah. uh, anytime we can really pick each other up, I, I just have to say we have to do it. Uh, these have been, a, the 2020 has been a very, very tough year for all of us and anxiety is running high. Um, at every level. And I want to do anything I possibly can to reassure parents and the students and the teachers and my colleagues that we will be in a better place. We have to keep the hope. We have to keep the teamwork alive and we will get where we need to be. Uh, but patience is a virtue, as they always say. And we have to uh, treat each other with the utmost, agree to disagree, but let's do it in a respectful and, and meaningful way. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm not going to be able to make everyone happy, as I'm sure people at home right now are sitting back and, and judging me in many ways that, um, uh, you know, could be perceived as negative. But at the end of the day, I'm here to work with you and partner you, uh, regardless of how I feel about individuals. It, it's about finding solutions for the betterment of children in a school community. And God bless us all, because I know it's been difficult on every single one of us. Um, and, and we will work together. We will be in a better place. I have no doubt about that. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Green. And thank you for that comment. That was yeah. appreciated. And the next person is right on the same page. Uh, just wanted to say thank you to all the teachers and staff for all of your hard work and dedication to making this process as easy as you can. This is new for all of us, but it's for the safety of our for our safety and our children's safety. I don't think administrators could live in our homes and fix our problems about where we're going to put our children or what we're supposed to do, but this is the new normal. No one asked for it, but we have to sacrifice for our children until this is all over. God bless you. Thank you, and God bless you as well. Very nice. Uh, truly, the, the, teachers, um, the teachers have been so wonderful. They, they've truly... Um, they're a team and they're supporting one another. And this is a new normal for them as well. They want nothing more than to have kids in front of them. They want to know more than, you know, hug a kid who's having a bad day and, and, and really make, make that child feel that much better. Um, but teachers are doing an awesome job, as are the custodians, the secretaries, the food service personnel, the paraprofessionals. We are all one family. And, and that's how we will proceed into the future. Um, so I'm looking forward, by the way, parents, to seeing each and every one of you in person. Uh, this I'm, I'm talking to a, a camera that's very powerful right now, and I hope it's reaching the masses. And I wanna tell you, I can't wait to meet you in person. I can't wait to meet the students in person uh, and continue developing these relationships that I value so, so much in and, and every school environment. It's just remarkable. Um, how things changed at the drop of a hat, uh, looking back to getting um, getting our normalcy back. Okay. 
Uh, here's a question about books. We've talked about that. Uh, this is a comment. Why are all private schools open face to face? Um, so my father taught me three things. Worry about the things you can control. Understand that there are things you can influence. And don't worry about the things you can't control. That is one thing I can't control. And I really can't give you an answer to. Uh, but thank you for the comment. Um, this is a good question. In case of internet interruption, will the daily class periods be recorded to allow kids to visit what they missed? Yes, and, and that's the wonderful thing about Google Classroom. The instruction will be posted on the classroom for those those students that run into tech, technology issues. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Will students get hard copies for our studies or is everything online? And if so, will we pick them up from school? Yep. Yes, we have those hard copies being uh, assembled as we speak and we will be scheduling a distribution curbside pickup. So please uh, keep an eye out for the schedule, uh, which will be forthcoming. Weather dependent, there may be um, a rainstorm and I'm not going to be expecting parents or staff to, to stand out in the rainstorm. So hopefully we will be um, starting on Monday, uh, Monday through Thursday of next week, we will get the hard copies in your hands. Okay. Here's a question about um, what happens if school starts before we get the Chromebook. I think we've talked about that. Um, If students need help, are there opportunities for one-to-one -one instruction or either face-to-face -face or virtually? Face-to-face, -face, no. Virtually will be during that checkout tutorial where uh, teachers will be able to provide further guidance um, for that student. Uh, and even during the period, if students or teachers select that they want to provide services for that student during that period of instruction, they can very well and very easily do it at that point in time. Uh, so here's a person who was saying, they know we've talked about it, but they weren't into the meeting yet. So they're asking about uh, when they get the schedule and when they get their Chromebooks. Yeah, so thank you and sorry you're late. And I went over the, the two o'clock time myself. Um, and I just wanna simply say the schedules are in process. Our earliest time uh, of delivery will be tomorrow evening. Our latest will be Friday evening. Um, the Chromebooks are being distributed uh, by an as needed basis. A priority list is being uh, referenced and created so we can get it to the neediest families first. Um, so I appreciate those questions. Uh, here's a parent who's asking, can you share the type of Chromebooks we ordered so they can try to order their own? And um, certainly maybe that's something that others had uh, inquired about and we will post that um, once we have the details. I'm, I'm truly not certain of the model and type. I just haven't been in, in detail with that, that statistic, so. Okay. okay. Um, can you help with the support of software if it's needed, such as Microsoft Word, et cetera? So software, uh, I do not believe the district is supporting software upgrades or uh, anything of that magnitude. Um, as far as we're concerned, we are supporting all the software that's intact with the Chromebooks. Uh, and that will be used on the Chromebooks. Yep, very good. If my parent works and I live far from Crestwood, how do I get my workbooks and Chromebooks? In Crestwood High School, I cannot comment. Uh, Riverside Middle School, again, uh, we are having distribution of, of the hard copies uh, next week and we will also be distributing Chromebooks at a later time. 
and teachers will definitely communicate how you can get additional resources if they require. Okay, and this is something we've covered. Um, how much students need to spend online, how much time, and what about testing? Yeah, so testing has been uh, placed on hold. Uh, other than the local assessments that the teacher is going to be giving in her classroom, uh, unit tests, uh, quizzes, that type of thing. Um, and then again, the screen time, uh, the research for middle school, middle-aged students, two and a half hours uh, daily is pushing it. So two hours for elementary, two and a half to three hours for middle school, three to three and a half hours for high school students. Okay. Uh, if kids who get free lunch can't come up to the school, will they be delivered to our homes? Um, I have no details, but I do not uh, believe that delivery services are part of the food distribution. But I do not, again, want to comment on something that has not been released. And um, please stay tuned. That's what I will say with the details and uh, I'll deliver it if I have to, um, to get your food. Uh, the, the bottom line is we'll figure something out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do kids have to have their cameras on during class time so you know it's the child and not the parent? And that again is, is going to be a request. I know there are some legalities uh, and if there are opt out issues, if parents do not want it, then the uh, teacher will have to do often uh, check-in to check for understanding. And teachers are planning on checking for understanding and making certain the student is still actively engaged. Okay. <laughs> Only 700 more questions. We're, we're getting there. Um, is there a chance for non-CAP students to get into advanced classes? That's a great question. And to be completely honest, that's a very long conversation uh, because the um, way CAP students are being determined um, uh, is a conversation that has to be had. Let's just put it that way. And the criteria has to be more definitive and clearly defined and communicated to the parents of Riverside Middle School and also in coordination with the elementary principals. We have to really take a second look at it uh, and we will. Uh, but for right now, um, standardized testing assessments is completely placed on hold. All right. Um, since school is going online, is the district training the parents and providing them with the tools and skills they're going to need to deal with the kids? Yes, and, and that training um, is going to be relevant to Google Suites how to access your child's um, information uh, and how to navigate Google Suites, Google Classrooms, the teacher's websites. Um, these are things that we will be definitely planning, but they will be 100% virtual. We are limited as to the amount of people we can have in the building. And as I stated previously, um, we have approximately 100 staff and that's the maximum amount that can be in a building uh, at any one time. So uh, virtually is how it's going to be. And we will do our best to provide parents with the, the training they require to be uh, successful in, in assisting and overseeing their child's education. Absolutely. Okay, here's a question about updating emergency contacts in MyStar. The emergency contacts, uh, you will be hearing more from the district and um, it will be posted on the school website as well. Uh, I simply, again, will follow up and include that in my letter to parents and my welcome back letter to parents this evening and hopefully get you some more specific specificity to those questions. Writing all these down, by the way, so I truly hope there's not 700 more. I'm going to run out of No, paper. no, no, no. Um, how does gym class work over Zoom? So 
So gym class, um, similar to every other rotation, um, will be requiring students participating in activities that are related to gym uh, and the home environment. Our teachers, um, Ms. Scher and Mr. Van Wasanova, um, are committed to really making certain that uh, students that may live in an apartment can still participate in gym class. So uh, they're being very creative and very sensitive to the home environment and the restrictions that um, the students would encounter in the home. So uh, absolutely, they'll be doing their thing just like uh, ceramics or art or um, robotics will be doing theirs, giving you a nice general broad understanding of their specialty. Okay, this is a good question. Do you have to use school Chromebooks or can you use your own computer? Very good question and something that I alluded to in my expectations. Just as long as you have Google Chrome as your um, platform and you're not using internet, do not try to access Google um, via Firefox or Internet Explorer, use Google Chrome. Uh, and regardless on what device you're using, if you're using Google Chrome as a platform, I don't think there's any problem um, or capacity or compatibility issues. But you will run into a bunch of hiccups if you choose to use Mozilla Firefox, Internet Explorer, in, in the other platforms or servers that are out there. So um, please, as a default, use Google Chrome with all your school day needs. All right, very good. Um, another question about non-CAP students and advanced classes. We just covered that. Um, and packet pickup. Uh, that information is going to be sent very soon. Well, if a student has ADHD, will they have extra help? Um, extra help if it's a working parent. Yes, absolutely. And extra help um, is always going to be the available. And our checkout tutorial period will ensure uh, that that student receives the help they need. It's not only going to be during that checkout tutorial. Again, teachers have the capacity to provide uh, students small group or individual instruction during that 45 minute block because it will not all be live instruction. Um, at times they will be working with small groups and I know a question was posed earlier. What do students or teachers, what are they going to be doing? This is exactly what they'd be doing with the rest of that live instruction they'd be servicing small groups or individual groups that they feel need the extra attention. So thank you for that. Okay, Mr. Awada, that is the end of the questions that we've gotten up till now. Thank you. I know we went over a bit here. Um, I truly uh, and sincerely want to thank all who joined and um, simply say I'm looking forward to a great year, first and foremost. I know this is nothing we've ever dealt with or um, had to deal with uh, in, in the past, but we will do our best through teamwork, uh, through being flexible, through being supportive, uh, and truly, um, we are here for you and your child and your family. Anything we can do to help, we will do that. I want to thank again the Board of Education, Dr. Mosalem, the teachers, all the staff that have been working tirelessly behind the scenes to get a good start. Nothing is gonna be perfect. Uh, please just be patient with us. We will get there together. God bless you all. Um, thank you, have a wonderful day. Uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you on Monday. I know I will get to meet some of you in social distancing when we're doing walker clean out and curbside pickup. And I'll look forward to that point in time. Uh, have a super day um, and take care of yourselves. Thank you.